Hi, welcome to DrivenMavens.com. My name is Arvin, and today we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to talk about production vehicles and what makes some production vehicles more compelling than others. So uh, I'm going to start it off by uh, uh, discussing some uh, basics, basics here uh, about uh, car designs. I get uh, a lot of uh, questions actually about uh, from uh, from people, from fans on the website, uh, asking me what uh, you know, how do you design the perfect vehicle? And uh, how do you design something that, uh, or how do you find that that magic uh, combination uh, that uh, turns heads? And the answer to that is there is no magic. <laughs> it's a, it's a very difficult question to uh, answer because uh, design is not an exact formula. Uh, design uh, is a culmination of experiences and uh, uh, learning from uh, uh, from the past and and learning and 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 practicing and uh, constructing understanding shape that's why we when we talk about basics on the site and we want people to understand the basics of form uh, that's why you need to understand a lot of that stuff first before we even get into more complex uh, shapes but that doesn't mean there aren't any guidelines there are guidelines that can help you to achieve uh, a, a vehicle that is somewhat compelling in design and that's what we can discuss. So uh, let's start. We're going to talk about um, this. A, just zoom in here on the page. See if I can write here. Okay, I think we are set. So one of the main things, and one of the top things we want to talk about is uh, uh, proportion of your vehicle. The second thing is uh, the vehicle stance. And three, graphical impact. Four, unity from, a, from a, uh, an aesthetic standpoint. And then simplicity. And then I'm going to uh, pull up a couple of images, which I feel are, uh, in my opinion, uh, a couple of companies that have been doing an outstanding job of uh, moving their brand forward and uh, basically leading the pack and, um, you know, leading des the uh, design trends and taking a lot of chances and so forth. So, um, all right, so let's talk about proportion. So proportion... Uh, when you're designing a vehicle, we're going to pick one of my favorites here is the BMW 3 Series. I'm going to pick a lighter color here so that I can mark on top of it. Okay, that's not too bad. I think that'll work. Okay, so when we're talking about proportion, um, every vehicle has a uh, proportion or a guideline that they need to follow so that the car looks somewhat correct. When you're sketching, a lot of the times when we sketch we do an exaggerated uh, version of what we intend the production to be. It's very difficult to draw like production. You're not going to be able to do it. There are a lot of constraints and so forth. Everything is is based on mathematics and packaging and so forth. So it's so when you're sketching, I mean that's that's your time to uh, go free and explore and just have a lot of fun uh, with uh, form exploration and then the final proportions and but you know they still have to follow some guidelines of basic proportions with uh, the width of the vehicle and the uh, length of the vehicle and so forth so uh, BMW right here you can see that you probably got when I take uh, let me uh, just cut this out a little bit all right so what do we got here? We got about one. We got two. We got about three. So it's about three vehicle spacings right here. Uh, a little bit longer than I uh, than I thought, but that's okay. So that's basically you know, how long the vehicle is. All right, I'm gonna just. Uh, hide all these. Uh, the second thing uh, for as far as proportion is uh, when you look at the height of the vehicle 
uh, the height of the vehicle as well is probably about a wheel length I'm sorry uh, yeah a wheel length so basically you've got about three across and then it's about another um, diameter high to get to the top of your vehicle okay so when you're drawing your cars you want to make sure that you know you're following at least some of these basic principles because if you don't uh, your drawings are going to look awkward you can't have a car that's doing something like this and then you got overhang or whatever it is right here right because this wheel spacing as you see it here is just not going to work right it almost looks like a, a well like a wooden toy car here okay so that's what we talk about that's what we mean when we talk about proportion now uh, stance the second uh, part of it is uh, how does your vehicle uh, how does your vehicle look you know that is you know when the car is sitting still what does it really communicate to the viewer or what do you want it to communicate to the viewer and your audience or the person who's going to buy it so if you're looking at a sports car you want something that looks fast you want something that looks very dynamic you want something that has movement you want to have a vehicle that looks like it's moving even though it's standing still so you look at the BMW over here and this is why I think they do such a terrific job uh, because you, you notice that the movement is downward everything is angled you've got a nice character line which is actually a crease line it's it's not too drastic it's not too overdone not overstated but it's got a tautness and a sharpness to it and that element is carried consistently throughout the vehicle so now you have repetition you have a sort of a rhythmic application of the crease lines that are consistent throughout the vehicle all right so this graphical stance when you look at the uh, wheel relationship to the wheel arches they're very close they take up just about the entire amount uh, the element the, the graphical element of the wheel itself uh, to the rest in relationship to the rest of the body and the uh, distance from the bottom of the vehicle to the ground is also fairly close so it looks stable the car it looks fast it looks stable it's planted to the ground you've got a low overhang here also so that overhang basically is the distance between the front of the wheel to the front of the vehicle <clears throat> so if this proportion or if this distance is less than what you have in the rear of the vehicle which it is also helps you to communicate movement that this vehicle is actually going forward even though it's standing still very important elements here to understand some of those facts okay the other thing is um, graphical impact so part of the graphical impact that we can look at is the DLO which is the daylight opening also known I believe as the greenhouse so that's basically the graphical shape that you see from your side window and your windshield and your headlamps so I'm gonna pull now a front view of the vehicle so you can see that okay so here we go once again the graphical impact you've got your headlamps and you've got your front grille so when you look at the BMW you can tell from a mile away this is uh, the grille is very important to defining the brand of your of your uh, of your vehicle you know that when you see this grille that you have a BMW and then when you look at an Audi you have a very pronoun large pronounced grille that takes up uh, a lot more real estate and then they separate it um, with the uh, license plate or actually just I'm sorry not the license plate but just that um, that horizontal graphic that splits it 
So when you see this from an Audi, I mean, you know that this is an Audi. It's very distinct, and you see this consistently in all their vehicles, and that helps to build that brand identity. And I think that uh, GM and Ford, Chrysler, those brands back, I would say, 10 years ago had a lot of difficulty in identifying their brands. Um, something was getting lost as they were trying to copy a lot of some of the other vehicles and I think only recently I think they've been doing a fantastic job of bringing their brand back and redefining themselves. Cadillac especially has been doing a fantastic job of of rebuilding their brand and opening up their demographic to a younger audience. So uh, that's, um, <clears throat> that's this is talking about the graphical impact. Now the next thing is uh, unity and what do I mean by unity? Let's bring out a uh, review. So when I talk about aesthetic unity, how do all the forms and shape relate to each other? And I think that BMW and Audi do an outstanding, without any question in my mind, in my opinion, an outstanding job of uniting all the elements, design elements, together to give a more of a sculptural feel to the vehicle. So, like I said, we have this consistency here. We have, when you're looking at this one, uh, real three quarter view, you have a consistency of the um, character line, which is designed by a very uh, hard creased uh, curve on the side facing of the car. That tautness and crease is carried throughout the vehicle. You see it everywhere. You see a nice relief. This also creates a nice graphical element. When you see this value change right here, that creates another graphic. It creates that, that value change creates that, that change in shape. And they've done a, a good job of making some of these uh, value changes very subtle, but at the same time, you know, they're very, you know, fairly simple surfaces. We're not talking about a lot of complex things, uh, complex surfaces here but they have the right amount of detail on the right locations to bring unification through every uh, side of the vehicle. So whether you look at this vehicle from the front side or the rear side or the top side or the side view, everything seems to have a purpose and that's very difficult to do. Uh, you know, I sometimes split a lot of uh, design elements between um, uh, cosmetic uh, uh, cosmetic uh, elements versus uh, uh, some of the elements that we're seeing right over here. When I look at uh, cosmetic, it's basically looking at uh, you define uh, surfaces that um, are surfaced really well and the shapes are pretty pleasing, but they don't have any purpose. They don't really relate to the rest of the vehicle. So right here, everything relates. Everything has purpose. The crease line comes here, it joins into the uh, tail lamps. The cut lines are distinctive. They also add a graphical element to the vehicle, defining the shape. So as a result, what happens is that you start to really appreciate the overall form of the vehicle. Even look at this cut line right here. You've got the door, side of the door. It comes out through here, and then you have a fast curve that ends right to the wheel well cut line to the wheel well. Same thing here. Now this is actually offset so they don't bring this out here and join it. They offset it a little bit. So these are very very important when looking at designing a vehicle. Is how do you make sure that everything is unified and not make it too complex that it starts to take away and distract from the vehicle. So that gets to my last point of simplicity is that you don't have to be make your vehicles super complex. Uh, for it to be pleasing to the eye. In fact, it should be the opposite. When you look at the Audi uh, S5 and the BMW 3 Series, they are a perfect example of using elegant simplicity, but yet they have a beautiful aggressive stance and they have that um, sophistication in their design and unification of the design that many others uh, don't seem to accomplish very well. So let me uh, bring up uh, the, the A5. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is just, that is just gorgeous. I mean, to me, this is, this is perfect. 
I mean, this is uh, this is what people should strive for when they are designing a vehicle. So once again, uh, let's look in comparison to what the BMW had. Uh, let me just erase this so I can kind of uh, see what it is that I had here. <clears throat> okay, so in contrast to the BMW, the BMW has the sharp crease character line and you see this, it's not that you don't see this a lot, you see this um, uh, very often in many other vehicles but just their surface treatment. On, in a lot of vehicles you um, you may have you know a contour of the if this if you're looking at um, the side of the vehicle and this is the door panel if you're cutting a section through here okay a lot of vehicles may have this same contour and then they will just add this character line so you have this little bit of an edge or maybe an indentation basically uh, into the sheet metal that carries across. Well, what BMW has done is that their character is, line is defined by a almost like a character surface. So it's basically sculpted with a chamfer. So they have something like this. And that's the same principle, or that's the same thing that you see in the Audi. They have this beautiful character surface right through here that's carefully sculpted, elegantly transitions to the rear with a very slight uh, sh uh, 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 a soft shoulder uh, to pronounce the, uh, uh, the uh, rear portion of the vehicle. And then you have, um, again, very clean surface transitions. Notice that for a luxury vehicle like an Audi, you don't see a lot of chrome molding um, all over the vehicle. You only see it here maybe, uh, you see it just at the, uh, the DLO, and then you see it on the grill, which you need, because that also helps to pronounce it. But they don't use it anywhere else. They let basically the surfaces of the vehicle define the vehicle and bring character to the vehicle, just by the sheer shape of it. They do this so well. I mean, once again, you see sharp chamfered edges, which is carried consistently throughout the vehicle. You have the Audi graphic right here for the front grille, which is consistent for all the vehicles, all Audi vehicles. You know that this is an Audi. You have an aggressive headlamp, so the headlamps are shaped um, at an angle, just like you have on the BMW. So that's also, um, go back here. So that makes a difference. That gives it an aggressive stance versus doing something like that, which is more passive, right? You have larger cutouts for where the fog lamps are. And um, the front of the vehicle, I mean, every part of this vehicle, every curve has purpose. You just watch and see how they bring this main uh, curve from the hood, this crease line, You've got a nice chamfer here uh, too, so it's all concave, slightly concave to convex. And then you, they take this um, line, crease line, and it joins all the way through um, forming the, um, <coughs> excuse me, forming the, um, the fog lamp or the graphic for the fog lamp. So you see everything has purpose. So now the character surface that goes to the rear, let me pull up the image from the rear here. Um, there we go. All right, so see how this joins in, connects to the back, and once you have, once again, you have very tight cut lines, and you have this beautiful graphical shape right here. And you have this nice relief underneath the, um, uh, the trunk lid here. And just enough detail to be able to describe that shape. Same thing here. So when you look at this, very simple, but yet you've got a very dynamic look. The wheels are huge. So the gap between the wheel and the wheel well is very small. So the stance um, of the vehicle is very strong 
It's very um, aggressive. I mean, fairly aggressive, not too aggressive. But um, everything communicates here elegance and speed, yet it's simple. So that's something that, I mean, so these are the elements that you need to start to look at. That if you want to look at, you know, what makes a very good design, start to break things down a little bit and try to understand why does this look better than another brand. Is it appropriate when you start looking at other vehicles? Can you look at that and say, well, you know, I love some of the shapes that are going on here, but does it start to distract from the overall form of the vehicle? And I'd have to say that the BMW and the Audi series, or the um, uh, Audi has been doing such a wonderful job of integrating not only graphic design, but uh, outstanding surface execution. So their graphical elements basically aid into the design uh, just like you're doing a graphical layout um, uh, when you're doing things with typography or, or whatever it is uh, the graphical element of your vehicle is just as much important as anything else when you're designing uh, the surfaces and stuff so uh, so keep those things in mind you need to keep in mind proportion we just talked about stance we talked about graphical impact we talked about unity and then we talked about simplicity and I'm telling you, BMW and Audi are leading the pack. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will see you here next time on DrivenMavens.com. If you guys have any questions um, and uh, need some answers, uh, just go ahead and email me anytime. Uh, there is a link uh, in the uh, Contact Us page uh, or tab uh, portion on the website, or you can go ahead and join us on Facebook and write to us and ask us some other questions. We'll be uh, glad to do whatever we can to answer it. And uh, we'll see you here again next time on DrivenMavens.com.